right friends welcome back to learning space this is the sixth live session and we are talking about various important questions with regard to ibps clerks main exam and before going ahead i would like to reiterate you certain things these videos are available in youtube please view them carefully then the last uh, five videos pertaining to PO interview, those whoever are facing PO interview, please view those modules and I would like to explain you a little bit after a little while from now and not only that, 32 modules are available especially pertaining to IBPS clerks mains exam that is in learning space digital.com please view those modules also and we are going to start newspaper editorials analysis from 2nd january and here i would like to tell you one more aspect these live lectures for ibps clerks mains exam we will complete with eight modules or you can say eight live sessions and as more and more students are asking for PO interview modules, IBPS PO interview modules, we are going to present 5 modules and please view the first 5 modules which we have uploaded last year, they are equally relevant even as on date also and in the 5 modules for exclusively for IBPS PO interview, we are going to present you 2 weeks before the starting date of interviews, two weeks before the starting date of interviews. So, we will have five live modules and there I will concentrate on two aspects, contemporary economy and banking issues and I am going to deliberate in detail what type of questions are expected and what should be your answer. I will concentrate basically on economy and banking events, contemporary events and please raise your questions whatever doubts you have in banking awareness, some of the students have raised some doubts, those doubts I am going to clear when I am discussing this IBPS PO interview modules. Please remember these interview modules we are going to start exactly two weeks before the starting date of IBPS PO interviews, right. So, other important aspect is the present live sessions will end with 8, today is the 6th live session, 2 more live sessions you will have next week. So, with that this series will end, banking awareness as well as whatever the modules available in learning space digital as well as these live lectures, I think they will be sufficient if you look at current affairs as well as banking and economy are concerned. So, please send your queries as far as banking awareness or economy is concerned to suggestions at learning space dot in. At the same time, please suggest the way you want editorials discussion, which we are going to start from 2nd January. So, having listened to this, we are going to deliberate on current affairs in this live video, right. So, look at the first one, SEBI relaxed investment rules for angel investors. 3, 4 important aspects are very important here, this angel investments as well as venture capital investments, angel investments, venture capital investments, these are categorized as alternative investment, right. So, they are, these are alternative investments. So, alternative investments are also regulated by SEBI that is one part. And second part is recently SEBI liberalized certain rules, here I have given those things, three things are very important here. Number of angel investors who can fund a startup company is raised from 49 to 200, that is first important development. So, maximum is raised from 49 members to 200 members, that is one part. The second part is the minimum investment limit reduced to 25 lakhs from 50 lakhs. Third important point is the lock-in period is reduced to one year from three years. Lock-in period is just one year now. Somebody may have a doubt what is the lock-in period. 
lock in period means your investments will be locked up you cannot come out of that company you cannot uh, sell it to some other person so that is the meaning of uh, lock in period please uh, don't forget so these three things are very important when you look at angel investments so alternative investment funds this is one important term and regulated by securities and exchange board of india second one is project insight this is basically income tax departments project so what is the main purpose of this project insight project insight will look at tax evaders people whoever are not paying taxes deliberately it is illegal so looking at tax evaders by using various multimedia platforms or you can say social media platforms like facebook twitter this is with the available tools of data mining big data and analytics right so if someone talks about project insight that is income tax department don't forget then look at trinetra this trinetra full form please go through it this is indian railways project this is basically to avoid the collision and here infrared and radar technology is used to collect signals up to a length of 2 to 3 kilometers up to a length of 2 to 3 kilometers so signals will be collected by using infrared technology as well as radar technology so full form please go through it terrain imaging for diesel drivers infrared enhanced optical and radar assisted system this is trinetra so if someone talks about trinetra that is of indian railways yesterday we talked about mission raftar mission raftar is increasing the speed potential to 160 kilometers per hour indian railways and at present the fastest train is gatiman express so these things please don't forget when you are looking at indian railways then if you look at the next one international telecommunication union this headquarters is in geneva and it published ict development index for 2016 and here it tracks latest developments regarding ict or you can say information and communication technologies and our rank is 138 out of 175 countries please don't forget we are poorly placed at 138 out of 175 countries and when you are talking about information and communication technology the country which should come to your mind is south korea south korea is number 1 and it is ahead as far as this ict technologies are concerned then this vittiya sakshrata abhiyan this is very important project and this is to make people aware about cashless economic system so if someone talks about visaka visaka is vittiya sakshrata abhiyan this is the initiative of human resource development ministry that is one part and here students as well as teachers will be roped in to motivate people to use digital technologies for cash payments so that is all about visaka look at the international film festival of india this was held in panaji goa and here two three important points are there veteran filmmaker ramesh sippi inaugurated this then focus country is south korea lifetime achievement award has gone to south korean film director quantic and daughter is the film which bagged golden peacock award sp balasubramanyam the famous playback singer of south india has got centenary award for indian film personality of the year so these things are very important when you look at 47th international film festival of india then paytm is into the news founder is vijay shekhar sharma people are talking about paytm paytm is nothing but pay through mobiles and paytm the majority you cannot say majority but 40% the largest share holding is by alibaba right that is one part and in payments bank sharma has to hold a majority share holding of 51% so vijay shekhar sharma is the founder of paytm and at present the 
substantial shareholding or you can say the highest shareholding in that company is by Alibaba. Why I am insisting on this is nowadays lot of emphasis is given on digital payments. Chitra Ramakrishna is stepping down as the MD and CEO of National Stock Exchange and citing personal reasons she is resigning that is one part and only last month she was appointed as the chairperson of board of world federation of exchanges this is second important news and as an interim measure the ceo is j ravichandran please don't forget look into the next issue people are talking nowadays about star double nine hash this works on USSD protocol that is unstructured supplementary service data. Yesterday I talked about it. Basically, it works with ordinary feature phones also without internet connectivity. And this is also known as star double nine hash is also known as national unified USSD platform. Please do not forget. Then massive open online courses. If someone talks about MOOC, basically this is nothing but online education. Now you are watching my lecture, it is example of online education. So, one government organization is there, that is the Swayam. Swayam is the government initiative and sometimes in the examination, you may be asked what is the full form of a Swayam. Swayam is study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds, this is very important. So, Swayam is basically for online education. Now, AICTE as well as University Grants Commission allowed up to 20 percent of MOOC or massive online courses, right. Then, point of sale machines, if someone talks about yesterday also I discussed these are the machines established in merchant establishments, right. RBI increased the limit for the money that e-wallets can spend in a month from rupees 10,000 to 20,000. And this is one part and if the account is linked with merchant account, if the point of sale machine funds transfer from such PPIs linked to the merchant's own bank account, the limit is 50,000 rupees. So, these two figures do not forget. National Institute of Savarikpa, you may have a doubt what is meant by Savarikpa. This is Tibetan medicine and it is also known as Amchi system of medicine and Indian government is establishing National Institute of Savarikpa at the lay in Jammu and Kashmir right this thing please do not forget. Then Palampur became the first E assembly constituency and this is situated in Himachal Pradesh. The meaning of E assembly constituency is, constituency is one can access development works going on by just one click, right. Next important aspect is Niti Aayog is giving so many incentives. Yesterday we discussed about certain incentives. And in this lecture, I would like to put forth before you certain aspects. One is in any district, if any person is brought onto the digital platform, per each person Niti Ayok came up with incentive of rupees 10 in any district. If a person is brought onto the digital framework through USST platform or Aadhaar enabled payment system, UPI digital wallets, debit cards, prepaid cards. If anyone is brought into this system, then district will get rupees 10 incentive per each person. And as an advance, each and every district is given up to a maximum of rupees 5 lakh per district. And finally, 10 best performing districts will be awarded by Digital Payment Champions of India Award. At the same time, 50 panchayats which go cashless will also be awarded. So, these things are basically to give incentives for shift to digital transactions. Right friends, look at the next one. This is Zika virus. Recently, World Health Organization declared that 
Zika virus is no more a public health emergency of international concern. In the month of February, who declared Zika as public health emergency of international concern and now it removed it because World Health Organization felt that it is no more a threat. And two, three important aspects. The country worst affected is Brazil probably. Second point is two diseases are associated with the Zika, microcephaly that means the brain size is reduced. Second one is gallien Bar syndrome, the nerves damage, these two are associated with Zika virus and this is mosquito borne virus, this is another part and at the same time this is first identified in monkeys in Uganda in 1947. Right. If someone talks about microcephaly, this is associated with Zika virus. Right, friends, look at the next one. Associate member, India is going to become associate member of European Organization for Nuclear Research or CERN. European Organization for Nuclear Research and this is the largest nuclear and particle physics laboratory in the world. You may have a doubt. What is meant by particle physics? All of you are hearing about photons or subatomic particles. So, this is research institute for subatomic particles and this CERN is headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland and India is going to become associate member and CERN has got at present 22 member states, right. Look into the next one. RBI has proposed to finance ministry with regard to provision of Islamic window. Under Islamic window or you can say Sharia banking, Islamic banking, whatever name you call it here, interest is prohibited, charging of interest is prohibited and loss and profit are to be shared. So, this is the principle of Sharia banking. RPA proposed to finance ministry to open this Islamic window branches, Islamic window in conventional banks, right. Finance ministry is yet to give its decision. Then Prime Minister launched Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Gramin, PMAY Gramin is for construction of houses in the rural areas and PMAY Urban is for construction of houses in urban areas and government's goal is housing for all by 2022 and PMAY Gramin was launched by the Prime Minister at Pune, please do not forget and under PMAY Arpan, Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Arpan, one important development is banks are giving loans up to rupees 6 lakh to economically weaker sections as well as low income groups, economically weaker sections as well as low income groups up to 6 lakh loans. Government is giving interest subvention of 6.5 percent. Interest subsidy is given by central government up to 6.5 percent. And when I am talking about interest subvention, interest subvention is available for agriculture loans, please do not forget. For agriculture loans, government is giving interest subsidy of 2 percent and if it is paid within time, another 3 percent is given by central government to the banks, right. So, this is interest subsidy or interest subvention. Then Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister inaugurated Agra Lucknow Expressway. Two things are very important. One is Agra Lucknow Expressway is the longest expressway in our country. This is in Uttar Pradesh. Second important point is here this Mirage landed on the here Mirage landed on the expressway. I would like to come to it a little while from now and before coming into it, let us move on to the next one. INS Chennai, this is the largest ever indigenously made warship. This was commissioned recently. This is INS Chennai. This is known as Project 15A. Project 15A is Kolkata class of destroyers and this is built by Mejagon Dock Shipbuilders Limited in Mumbai. So, if someone talks about 
the largest ever warship to be built in India that is INS Chennai which was recently commissioned. And next one, this is very important, Radhika Menon, she became the first woman to receive the IMO award for exceptional bravery. As captain of shipping corporation of India's Sampurna Swarajya, she saved the lives of fishermen. So, this name is very important, please do not forget, the name is Radhika Menon, India's female merchant navy captain and she got this IMO award for exceptional bravery and she is the first woman to receive IMO award for exceptional bravery, the name is Radhika Menon, do not forget. Then, Mangalampalli Balamurali Krishna, famous Carnatic vocalist, he died in Chennai. Two, three things are associated with Mangalampalli Balamurali Krishna, born in Andhra Pradesh, then Padma Vibhushan winner, third thing is famous Carnatic vocalist. And if you look at this news, Japan India Institute of Manufacturing will be set up. This is important because people will be trained in Japanese style of manufacturing, that is Japan India Institute of Manufacturing. And here 30,000 Indian youth will be trained over the next 10 years. How they will be trained? They will be trained in Japanese style of manufacturing. So, this institute will come up in India, this is Japan India Institute of Manufacturing. Indian Institute of Skills, recently the Prime Minister has led the foundation stone at Kanpur, that one please do not forget, because that is going to be the first India Institute of Skills, which is coming up at Kanpur and here, and here Japan India Institute of Manufacturing is also coming up. Then former ISRO chairman M. G. K. Meenan died. He was advisor in the Department of Space, director of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, fellow of Royal Society of London and he died at the age of 88. Then eminent journalist who was associated with the Times of India for a long time, Dilip Padgaonkar died in Pune and he got France's highest civilian distinction also. Then, Amphibious rescue aircraft US 2 belongs to Japan. Certain things as far as defense matters are concerned, please do not forget. One is amphibious US 2, this can land both on water as well as land. This is manufactured by Japanese firm. Then if you look at Hovitzer M777, these are the guns manufactured by USA firm. Recently, one agreement was also signed for procurement and P8 Poseidon, this is manufactured by American firm. Then this Chinook as well as Apache, these helicopters are manufactured by American firms and if you look at this Kamo 226 T helicopters, this is Russian make, do not forget Kamo 226 T helicopters, Russian make at the same time. S-400 Triumph Missile Defense System, this is also Russian make and this is INS Chakra Nuclear Submarine, this is also Russian make, these things do not forget and Rafale, all of you are clear about this Rafale fighter jets, this is France make and then Kalashnikov weapons, Kalashnikov weapons are manufactured in Israel, do not forget. Then Facebook Connectivity Lab set world record by transmitting at nearly 20 Gbps for 13.2 kilometers under MMW technology. Here two things I would like to tell you. What is meant by MMW technology? MMW technology is millimeter waves technology. These are electromagnetic waves. Second thing is it is generally used for point to point transmission, these two things are important. MMW if someone asks that is millimeter wave technology, look into the next one. Maiden flight of indigenously made Rustum 2, what is Rustum? Rustum is also known as a tapas, 
this is the drone, this is medium altitude, long endurance, unmanned aerial vehicle, please do not forget, manufactured by HEAL and BEL, right. Look at the next one, this is with regard to Sunway Taihu light. This is the world's fastest supercomputer, please do not forget. This is a Sunway Taihu light, world's fastest supercomputer and China has got this tag for the eighth time. As world's fastest supercomputer, China has got the tag for the eighth time, please do not forget. Look into the next one. By using debit cards, the withdrawal limit of cash at POS terminals at merchant establishments is rupees 2000. Recently, government has made it uniform. You can withdraw up to rupees 2000 withdrawing cash at merchant establishments. Previously, it was not uniform. Now, it is made uniform at rupees 2000, right. Then, Agra Lucknow Expressway, we just now discussed. But here one interesting point is 3 Mirage 2000 as well as 3 Sukhoi 30 jets of Indian Air Force landed and this is a basically to check the feasibility of expressways for use in emergencies, right. So, 3 Mirage, Mirage is a France make and Sukhoi, Sukhoi is a Russian make. So, they landed on this nation's longest expressway, then heart of Asia conference. Here two, three important things I would like to tell you. This was held in Amritsar. Second point is this was held for the first time in our country. What is the purpose of heart of Asia conference? Heart of Asia conference is basically to ensure peace and stability in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is almost at the center point of Asia. Peace and stability of Afghanistan is very much essential for the peace and stability of region as a whole. And second important point is, it is a part of Istanbul process which was started in the year 2011, right. So, this Heart of Asia conference was held in Amritsar. Then we are talking about Akodara. Akodara is the first digital village in the country. It is in Gujarat. And now ICICI Bank stated that it will develop 100 digital villages. This Akodara was also developed by ICICI Foundation. And if you look at currency management system of Reserve Bank of India, this I am talking about how the currency that is the notes as well as coins. If someone talks about currency, it includes both notes as well as coins. How the currency is distributed? For currency distribution, there are currency chests are there and small coin depots are there. And if someone asks you a question, this currency chests and small coin depots, they are basically under Reserve Bank of India. They are basically under Reserve Bank of India, but they are maintained by one or the other bank. Maximum currency chests are maintained by State Bank of India. And here, how they are distributed, I have given here flow diagram. And here, one important aspect I would like to reiterate, this Bharatiya Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited has got two printing presses at Mysore and Salboni. And this Security Printing and Minting Corporation of India Limited has got two printing presses at Nasik in Maharashtra, Devas in Madhya Pradesh, right. Then, RBI issued certain clarifications with regard to external commercial borrowings. Here two things are very important. What is external commercial borrowing and what is hedging? External commercial borrowing is basically commercial loans taken from abroad by Indian corporates. They may be private sector corporates, public sector corporates, it does not matter, but they are taking the commercial loans from abroad. So, that is external commercial borrowing. And if external commercial borrowing is in rupee terms, they are known as masala bonds. And if it is not in rupee terms, it is in other currency like dollar or euro, then hedging is required. And somebody may ask you, what is meant by hedging? Hedging is basically to reduce the risk 
of currency depreciation. Right? So, these two terms meaning is very important those whoever are facing interview. Then Pakistan Prime Minister inaugurated the Gwadar port. Here two, three points I would like to tell you. One is if someone talks about one belt, one road initiative that is of China that is one part. Then this Gwadar port, Gwadar port is in Pakistan specifically it is in Balochistan province of Pakistan. And another point is Chabahar port is in Iran. The distance between Chabahar and the Gwadar port is not much and all of you should not forget about this China Pakistan economic corridor or CPEC right and super moon was observed all of you are familiar with this super moon it was observed on 14th November and the next super moon if someone asks you you will feel it in the year 2034. So, you have to wait up to 2034 to watch next super moon and you may have a doubt when this super moon is observed. There are two conditions are to be met. When moon is revolving around earth, it should be closer to earth that is known as perigee and at the same time that day should coincide with the full moon day also. See these, so these two things are very much essential. So, you have to wait till 2034 to get super moon again. India's first 100 percent electric bus, this is 100 percent electric bus, this was unveiled by Ashok Leyland and yesterday I talked about Tata Motors, so please view that, do not forget that. This is Ashok Leyland, this unveiled India's first electric bus, 100 percent electric bus. Surya Kiran exercises, India and Nepal and they were held these are 10th joint military exercises, they were held in Nepal. We discussed about uh, several joint exercises hand in hand between India and China, Indra, India and Russia, Sampriti, India and Bangladesh, Surya Kiran, India and Nepal, at the same time Mitra Shakti, India and Sri Lanka. So, these things do not forget. This is about hand in hand. Just now I have told you hand in hand between India and China and these exercises were held recently in Pune, please do not forget. And Sampriti, just now I told you they are with Bangladesh, then Mitra Shakti with Sri Lanka, then this Colombo declaration, this is very important. This is basically to reduce the drug trafficking of Indian Ocean region. So, if someone talks about Colombo declaration, this is to reduce drug trafficking in Indian Ocean region, do not forget. Then small savings schemes, you may have a doubt about small savings schemes. I listed out here various small savings schemes, Sukanya Samruddhi, Kisan Vikas Patra, Public Provident Fund, National Savings Certificates then post office savings deposits, post office recurring deposits. These are all examples of small savings schemes and these are revised once in three months. And another important aspect is they are administered by finance ministry. These two things do not forget. Then special investigation team on black money. This is important because it was not constituted recently, but it is still in existence. Justice M. B. Shah is the chairman of Sit on Black Money. This anyone may ask you at any time. Then Global Rajasthan Agritech Meet or GRAM basically for farmers empowerment to showcase agri innovations. This was held in Jaipur, do not forget. Then India's longest river bridge, India's longest river bridge is coming up on River Ganga. This is coming up in Bihar and second point is once it is completed, it will become India's longest river bridge and Asian Development Bank is giving 500 million dollars loan. Then Paul Betty, this is about the man booker price. He got this price for the sellout, that is one important point. The name of the book is the sellout. He got this man booker price and the first US author, the cash price is 50,000 pounds. 
these things are very very important do not forget then this is one important aspect HCC. Hindustan Construction Company Limited became the first company to get approval under S4A. This is very important and here joint lenders forum was headed by ICICI bank and it was approved by the overseeing committee nominated by Reserve Bank of India and there are some conditions to be met and here one important aspect is here the total debt is bifurcated into sustainable debt and unsustainable debt and sustainable debt should be minimum 50 percent this is very very important aspect. So, S4A the sustainable debt should be minimum 50 percent and HCC is the first company then two ACD women. So, if someone talks about ACDs maximum ACD population are in Iraq, do not forget maximum Azidi population are in Iraq and maximum Kurdish population these are in Turkey and Rohingyas, Myanmar, Madhesis, Nepal these things do not forget and two Azidi women have got this Sakharov prize and this is a Sakharov prize started by European parliament do not forget basically this is given to the persons or organizations who defend human rights and fundamental freedoms. Here next one is Justice Brijesh Kumar Tribunal is basically with regard to sharings of waters of river Krishna do not forget then arena stadium this is very important arena stadium is in Ahmedabad. The beauty of this stadium is it can be converted both into indoor and outdoor stadium. It can be both converted into indoor as well as outdoor stadium. So, that is the beauty of uh, arena stadium please look into, the, look into this picture right. Next CEO of NIIF here I would like to tell you one aspect what is NIIF? NIIF is National Investment and Infrastructure Fund basically to promote infrastructure investment this was started. And here CEO is Sujay Pose do not forget. Then interim chairman of Tata Sons there is lot of struggle and there is lot of corporate battle or boardroom battle is going on in Tata Sons group. And here two things are important interim chairman is Ratan Tata and the outgoing chairman was Cyrus Mistri and who is the largest owner of this Tata Sons largest owner is Tata Trusts that is very important and this Shapurji Palanji group this holds 18 percent stake these things do not forget. Then Supreme Court upheld that Bombay High Court order of permitting women to the inner sanctum of Hazi Ali Darga. Maximum somebody may ask you where is Hazi Ali Darga? Hazi Ali Darga is in Mumbai do not forget. Look into the next one, name the world's first solar powered airport. Some newspapers claimed it as India's first, but some newspapers stated world's first. Kochi International Airport is the first solar powered airport and at the same time recently the prime ministers inaugurated Harney Airport in Vadodara is the second solar powered airport, right. Next one is Government recently allowed external commercial borrowing for startup companies. Do not forget, I have already discussed about external commercial borrowings and here for startup companies. Recently, government allowed this external commercial borrowing up to 3 million dollars per year, this is very important. So, now startup companies, upcoming companies can access every year 3 million dollars from abroad. Then Ross C, this is very important. Certain things do not forget Paris Agreement, Kigali Pact, then Ross C. Ross C is a part of Antarctic Ocean or Southern Ocean, that is one part, and this was declared as world's largest marine protected area. World's largest marine protected area is the Ross Sea, and here commercial fishing is banned for 35 years, right? Then, first state in India which was declared as open defecation free, that is Sikkim, 
followed by Himachal Pradesh and Kerala and all the cities and towns of Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh were also declared as open defecation free. Right? Then carbon dioxide levels in 2015 touched 400 ppm. If someone talk about this carbon dioxide levels, they touched 400 ppm and pre-industrial levels were 280 ppm. Next one is Asia's largest man-made jungle safari was inaugurated in Chhattisgarh by the Prime Minister. And two things we are celebrating birth the centenary celebrations of Pandit Deen Dayal Upadchai as well as Nanaji Deshmukh. And Pandit Deen Dayal Upadchai was born in Uttar Pradesh whereas Nanaji Deshmukh was born in Maharashtra. These things do not forget. Prime Minister inaugurated 16th Foundation Day celebrations of Chhattisgarh. And at the same time, the Prime Minister also launched Saur Sujala Yojana. By using solar energy, pump sets will be run. Next, these things do not forget. Recently, formation days. If you look at formation dates, Karnataka, Kerala and Madhya Pradesh completed 60 years of their formation. And Haryana completed 50 years of its formation. These things do not forget. And the last question, name the high court which celebrated its golden jubilee. This is Delhi High Court. Delhi High Court was established on 31st October 1966. So, Delhi High Court celebrated 50 years, Patna High Court 100 years, Allahabad High Court 150 years. So, these things do not forget. So, friends, this is our sixth live lecture, we concentrated on current affairs, recent events and seventh and eighth lectures, live lectures we will have next week before your exam. As I have told you in the beginning, we will present five live lectures on how to face interviews of IBPS PO exactly two weeks before the starting date of interview and we will continue our seventh live lecture for IBPS clerks next week. And Till then, thanks a lot for watching this program. Have a nice day. Thank you.